You may be seated. <clears throat> well, we're going to have a, a children's message, kind of. Uh, children, you can stay seated where you are, but you have to pay extra special attention to what I say because I have questions for you that will help us all out. So, children, those of you who are here, my first question is, do you worry about anything? Do you worry about anything? And, and really, this is open for children of all ages. So if you're like 90 million years old and you feel like a child in your heart, feel free to answer. So uh, children of all ages, do you worry about anything? And if you do, what do you worry about? What's one thing that you worry about? Yes? You worry about car traffic? Okay, yeah, that's legit. Yeah, car traffic is dangerous sometimes. You've got this, <coughs> you know, one ton pile of steel driving down the road at 80 kilometers an hour or more, and it's a dangerous thing. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I worry about that sometimes too. Anybody else? All right, older folks. Yes? Finding a place where you can retire. Oh, I'm, I worry about getting caught on the pulpit. Uh, finding a place where you can retire. I hope you find a really nice place. I can understand that, though. There are waiting lists for some places that are ridiculously long, and real estate is super expensive, and all kinds of stuff. It's, yeah, I understand worrying about that. I worry a little bit about whether I'll ever be able to retire. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, David. Fail fear of failure. Oh, man. Yeah, I can identify with that one big time. Sometimes I'm so afraid of failing that I won't even want to start something. Because if I don't start it, then I can't fail at it because I never did it. That's not very healthy, but that's how I feel sometimes. Anybody else? Yeah, Jeanette. Nothing in particular. Being able to do your job. Yeah. So Jeanette, um, w which we're very grateful for, Jeanette recently-ish got a job at Tim Hortons, which we praise God for that. That's wonderful. But of course, with her knee... Um, you know, Tim Hortons or any other uh, retail or restaurant service type thing requires a lot of standing. And so, yeah, I can understand worrying about that. Anybody else? Yeah. School, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it feels sometimes like there's an awful lot hanging on the line. And uh, yeah, yeah. Understandable. Tony. Yeah. I think um, when I talk to grandparents, I think that is probably the number one worry that I hear from so many grandparents is worrying about their grandkids. You know, we talk about how, you know, there's that saying, if I knew how much fun grandkids would be, I would have had them first, right? <laughs> Which is great. It's true. It's wonderful. But also, you know, you love them so much and you want them to do so well. And <sighs> yeah. Randy, I saw a hand up. Oh, my word, yes. <coughs> yep. Technology failing at critical times, if I can extend it a little bit. Oh, this past 18 months, oh man, there's so many times where I was like dying because I'm sitting here, this upload is taking 45 hours and it's church tomorrow and it's, ah, right? Oh, yes, yeah, technology, Ugh. I mean, yeah, anyways. Anybody else? Yeah, those are all legit worries. Now, children, do you think that it's wrong 
to worry about stuff? Is it a sin to worry about stuff? Okay, I'm seeing some shakes of the head, and I'm seeing some nods of the head. This is tricky. Because the Bible tells us not to worry about anything. But at the same time, we see Jesus and lots of other biblical characters get pretty stressed out, right? Let me read to you a little bit from the Gospel of Luke. This is from just before Jesus is betrayed into the hands of the religious leaders. Luke chapter 22, verse 39. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, and yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground jesus himself was stressed out by the realities that faced him and of course we know that he wasn't sinning but we also see that jesus did something very very important Jesus put all of his stress and all of his worries, he gave them to his Father in heaven. He gave them to his Father in heaven. Brothers and sisters, children, you're going to worry about a lot of stuff in this world. The disciples worried about a lot of stuff, too. But part of growing up, growing up as a Christ follower, is learning more and more to give those worries to God. Sometimes you'll have to do it over and over and over again about the same worry. Sometimes you'll be able to do it and that will be the end of it. But no matter what, no matter how you feel, no matter what is worrying you or stressing you out, whether it's school or work or failure or computers or anything else, give those things to God, okay? Pray to God, help me, Jesus. Help me, 